Did you know that ladies who are or aspire to become professional truck drivers face unique challenges from their male counterparts? What do they need to know to help them save time and money? Hello, I'm Vicki Simons with TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com. Tonight I'm going to be talking about female truckers and what I'm going to be talking about comes primarily from the page on our website about female truck drivers and I will be posting the link to our URL in the comments below after I'm done with this broadcast. All right, it's interesting as I look back on what I wrote, the very first sentence that I said was, trying to lump all female truckers into one category is about as easy to do as herding cats. Okay, and that's true because every woman is unique. Okay, there are some women who are more alike in some areas than others, but each one is an individual, and we don't really like being compared. Well, you know how girls are, you know how ladies are, you know how women are. No, we're not all that way. Okay, so there's a lot of variety among women in tr uh, truckers, so among women truckers. They may be single, married, widowed, divorced, or any other classification that you would care to name, but they all have one thing in common, and that's that they're female, okay? I was a professional truck driver as a woman, okay? I went to truck, my husband and I went to truck driver training school together. There was one other woman in our class. Everybody else was a guy, and so... Uh, some of these things that I'm going to be sharing are as experience as a professional truck driver and also as someone who has ridden full time with my husband in the truck, okay, as a passenger, okay. Uh, speaking of passengers, if you're going to be a passenger in a truck with your husband, ladies, or uh, your significant other, hopefully you're married though, uh, you will always want to make sure that there's proper authorization for you to be in the truck and also if there is insurance that needs to be had on you that that insurance is in place. Okay, so obviously uh, when you're looking at trucking as a whole, it is a male dominated industry. Okay, I think that I saw some sort of a statistic somewhere that said that there's approximately 7% of the population of trucking that is ladies. And I'm going to use the word ladies and female uh, interchangeably. I hope that's not offensive to you ladies, but I think that we need to raise the bar, okay? We don't need to be scum buckets out there uh, trying to hook up with whoever on the road, but uh, hopefully if that's your lifestyle, uh, you will uh, change it because you could be taken uh, greatly advantage of. All right, obviously uh, ladies who are on the road as professional truck drivers have to have a certain amount of strength physical strength to be able to do their jobs, okay, and you've got a situation where the statistics are in our favor, yes, okay, it said that female truck drivers, at least as of the time that I wrote this page, are three times less likely to get involved in an accident than male truck drivers, five times less likely to violate safety regulations, and four times more likely to pass their CDL certification exam on the first attempt than men, and as speaking of that, I did. I'm quite the woman. Okay, I got my CDL on the first time that I tried it. Mike had to go back. In fact, I think it was the case, honey, that uh, everybody that was in the truck that went down from our truck driver training school in the truck that he was in the first time, they failed it. So um, anyway, <laughs> he's nodding his head yes. Okay, so let me move on with that. All right, uh, one of the big challenges that women have on the road is their health issues, okay? And I'm going to lightly cover this because it's something that could be uh, covered on our uh, Feeling Fabulous Friday broadcast, and I think I'm going to do that this, this coming Friday. I'm going to focus specifically on female health issues, but uh, generally speaking, uh, let me go down through here. It says, analyses of the 284 surveys showed that 77.8% had a usual place of health care, meaning females. One of, one of five had no insurance coverage and only 35 respondents had paid sick leave. Drivers reported substantial prevalence of sinus problems, back pain, migraine headaches, and hypertension. Drivers ignored symptoms or self-medicated when working more than 40% experienced dissatisfaction with health care while, while on the road. And of course, this is a 2003 uh, study that I'm citing here. So this is well over 10 years old. Things may have changed since I wrote this. All right, women have a tendency, depending upon what age they are, dealing with premenstrual syndrome, menstrual cycles, age, uh, change of age issues, uh, toxic shock syndrome, yeast infections, things like that. Like I said, I'm going to be covering this more in detail for ladies uh, specifically on our Feeling Fabulous Friday uh, broadcast. 
all right? You'll want to deal with these things as they come, all right? Uh, when you've got a, a medical issue, ladies, don't just slough it off, all right? You probably want to get some attention on that. If, so, if it's something that you can self-medicate, so to speak, and, of course, we recommend 100% pure therapeutic grade essential oils to take care of a lot of your health and wellness needs, but do not ignore something that's like a chronic pain somewhere, okay? I, I remember very specifically uh, my husband was involved in a situation he had actually uh, misstepped off the tractor, fallen on the ground. I didn't actually see this, but he told me about it later. And the fall that he sustained ended up shifting something in his back, and it ended up with sciatic nerve problems, and it got shooting pains down his leg, and he ended up having to take two weeks of paid un unpaid time off in order to get that situation dealt with. And we went back and forth and back and forth to the chiropractor. And I finally asked the chiropractor, I said, why is this taking so many of these adjustments to do this? In other words, I wondered if he was actually doing his job right. And he told me that because Mike had delayed in getting treatment in the first place, okay, that his body had literally trained itself to be in that out of alignment position. So what he was having to do, sometimes, if memory serves me correctly, I know there was at least one time we went to the chiropractor twice in one day, and he was having to basically readjust Mike's body back into alignment and try to retrain his body how to be. So, ladies, if you're uh, in a situation like that, don't put off uh, something that you need. All right, a whole new thing uh, arises when, a whole new paradigm arises when you've got a male co driver, all right? All right, any kind of a co-driver could uh, be an interesting situation, but uh, if you're driving with a family member like I did, okay, uh, with my husband, okay, it can be a little bit better than driving with a complete stranger or someone that you don't know about. All right, there can be a tremendous teamwork uh, in driving with a family member. It was with us, my husband, Mike and I, we really applied ourselves when we were teaming. Uh, that first 20 months that we were with uh, SWIFT, we decided we were going to pay off all of our federal student loans, and they were substantial, okay, before we left SWIFT and went with U.S. Express, okay? We ended up doing that, and we were so glad that we did, all right? Uh, some of you, depending upon if you have a co-driver or not, you may have some certain strengths. One of you may prefer the in-study driving versus the other, but you will want to try to divide up those responsibilities uh, evenly. Now, other than the six-week period of time that I spent driving with, um, uh, with Swift, okay, and I had a male trainer in the truck, okay, and he, because of the nature of our um, our driving, okay, it was one of those where we went from South Carolina up to Ohio and back, okay, and then the truck stayed for a night in South Carolina, and we do it over. I think it was like three of those up and back, but basically. Um, we didn't sleep in the truck together, okay? One of us was driving, and that's the way Swift worked it back then, is that um, when you were in a, tra a uh, training situation, it was like you were teaming, okay? And Mike has talked about that on a previous broadcast. But anyway, uh, when Bill was sleeping, I was driving. When I was sleeping, Bill was driving, that kind of thing. So um, you want to be careful in a mixed-gender situation like that. Now, Mike has his oldest sister... Uh, was in a team driving capacity with a guy that at that time she was not married to. He eventually became her husband. But anyway, she had to set boundaries, okay, about how she was going to act and uh, how they they work together, uh, that sort of thing in their in their team. And we talk about the mutual expectations there. Desiree Woods, uh, who is at Trucker Desiree on Twitter, has documented some problems encountered by women entering truck driver training, okay? And there's an entire uh, hush up, if you will, of about the abuse that happens within some trucking companies regarding the harassment, the abuse, uh, dare I even say the rape of some women by some male trainers in the trucking industry. So uh, you want to set those uh, ground rules on appropriate behavior. Ladies, always leave yourself an out, and if nothing else, learn some self-defense techniques. I've got a, um, I've got a video on this female truckers uh, page on our website, truckdriversmoneysavingtips.com, 
and it is excellent. In fact, the two videos that came up after I was done watching that particular one were also about how women can protect themselves from a male assailant. In fact, one of those videos actually showed how a woman was able to protect herself against two male assailants. Okay, so um, the security and self-defense issues are very much uh, needed when you're on the road. Some women prefer to have a companion animal uh, with them uh, to be able to help defend themselves. And you will want to look at our pet travel uh, page. And I did a previous broadcast about having pets on the road. Because women generally have a need to express themselves more than men, you'll always want to make sure that you have a way to keep in touch with your family members and your friends back home. We do encourage you, ladies, to be able to have some sort of a communications device like a cell phone. And in order to be able to make sure that you are not in violation of a federal uh, mandate, okay, I'm not sure if it's actually a law or if it's simply a regulation, but you do not want to use a handheld cell phone. That's bad, okay? Get yourself a, a headset to where you can use it hands-free, all right? Also, I want to get into this just a little bit, but it's talking about female truckers facing truck maintenance and repairs on the road. And this is something that I actually faced. Okay, early on in our team driving days, long before CSA ever kicked in, we were assigned a load heading north from our company's South Carolina yard. We noted during a pre-trip inspection, the low tread, that is the, the small amount of tread depth, on several of the tires, but the folks in the shop didn't want to deal with replacing three tires at once on the company's equipment. And I was driving near Greencastle, Pennsylvania, when one of the truck tires blew out. All right, we were sent to a nearby commercial trucking, uh, excuse me, a commercial tire business. And while we were inside, I tried to get the person at the trucking company to authorize that the two other tires with the low tread be replaced as well. The person on the inside of our trucking company wouldn't pay attention to me, all right, perhaps because he thought that I was just a female trucker or a newbie and didn't know any better. I'll get back to this in a moment, but this raises a very interesting situation. I'll get into a little bit more in depth in just a minute. Ladies, if you have a commercial driver's license, you are every bit as qualified to drive a truck as any man. Do not allow someone to demean you simply because your chromosomes are different from his. All right, I'll get into that in just a moment. All right, back to this tire situation. I had already consulted with the mechanic at the tire business where we had the one tire replaced about the other two tires and the mechanic agreed with me that in his professional opinion, it was only a matter of time before the other two tires blew out too. And so I got the mechanic on the phone to report that situation to our trucking company and eventually the truck, the company had to pay for three tires on the road that could have easily take, been taken care of at the terminal. Okay, so in other words, my feedback at the company's terminal was not heated. Okay, I wanted to save the trucking company both the time and the money, but they were unwilling to listen to me at the time. You gotta understand, this was back in our early days of trucking in the 1990s. Things may have changed since then at Swift, and I hope they have, but the thing about it is, is every trucking company needs to pay attention to its female truckers every bit as much as it pays attention to its male truckers. All right, when you're faced with any kind of a truck issue, preventive maintenance, scheduled repair, or breakdown, do not allow anyone to talk down to you or refuse to answer your questions. All right, you are responsible for the rig that you drive, even if you're driving a rig owned by someone else. If someone refers to you as the little lady, okay, determine if this is meant as a compliment or a put down. Okay, if you sense in any way that it has been used condescendingly, you can say something like this, in a nice tone of voice, of course. Thank you for calling me a lady, but I am also a professional who needs a safe truck to drive for the lowest cost possible. Are you willing to help me with that? All right, and give the person the opportunity to answer affirmatively. If you sense any hedging, Ask if there is someone else like the mechanic supervisor to whom you can talk. Seek to learn as much as you can from the mechanics who do your truck work so that you will not be uh, held hostage 
by those who might take advantage of what you don't know about your truck mechanically. Don't forget that you can also write a service review on our website, truckdriversmoneysavingtips.com, about the quality of the truck service you received. If it helps, you can state that you'll be writing a review for this website about the service you received. All right, sometimes nothing causes a person to straighten up and fly right like the knowledge that his or her work and attitude will be documented for the world to see. All right. Are there any questions or comments at this point? I know I saw someone who is live on the broadcast just a little bit. I want to give them an opportunity to talk. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to do that after this broadcast is over or get in touch with us through our website, truckdriversmoneysavingtips.com. And if you're getting value from this video, please give likes, shares, and hearts. Uh, we do want to help as many professional truck drivers as possible, including female drivers, to save money, time and money out on the road. All right, so my last money-saving tip for tonight in this broadcast, special Sunday about female truckers, is this. Before you go out on the road, plan what you will need to take with you. This includes personal hygiene items and hopefully natural products to help you when you're stressed. Do not attempt to lift items into or out of your truck that are too heavy for you. I mentioned the other night about an ice chest. Some of these may be too heavy for you to haul. If you can, break down the package into smaller and lighter packages. If you can't make the package smaller, get help. All right? Practice looking into your surroundings often, all right? Especially if you are out on your uh, if you are out of your truck. Don't miss the obvious or the things that may happen to you while you're looking for the obvious. All right? Have that radar, if you will, of what's happening around you so that you know if someone's approaching you from the rear or the side and they have uh, mal intentions, okay, bad intentions for you. All right? Always be prepared. Remember uh, one of the videos, I think it's the one video that's on uh, that page of our website, the little nursery rhyme the guy uh, taught about the vulnerable places on the body. If you are attacked or uh, groped, or if someone is trying to uh, do something to you uh, with bad intentions, go for the soft areas. Defend yourself, ladies. You do not need to put up with this. If you are being uh, talked down to in a training situation, get in touch with your trucking company. Leave yourself an out. Always have some way of being able to contact the outside world and do not put up with it. Do not allow yourself to be taken advantage of. You are a professional and you deserve to be treated like one. Okay. Uh, part of this sounds like a rant because I feel very strongly that women need to be empowered. Okay, you got you ladies, you need to be empowered with the truth. You need to be empowered with what it is that's going to save you time and money. Okay, if you're raped and you're going to be involved in medical issues, all right, I want to protect you from that. I want to save you the, the fuss and the agony of that. All right, lots of other information on here. Like I said, I'm going to be talking about the health issues in this coming Friday night's Feeling Fabulous Friday broadcast. Until then, my husband Mike and I wish you safe travels and lots of money-saving opportunities on the, on the road. Have a great night. Thanks.